spent part of his past in May in Montenegro, and it really is a country of contrasts. From the world famous Kotor Bay to the off the radar city of Nikšić and the ethnic Albanian majority town of Ulcin, these were the most unique places we came across. This list wouldn't be complete without a visit to Kotor Bay. Even though we rant about it becoming over touristy in the other linked video, it is indeed a little slice of heaven, with our favorite being a hike up to Kotor Fortress. To the fort. We just paid 15 euro each to exercise. Can you believe that? It's a steep hill and a very steep price, but probably worth it. Let's see. As we hiked up each of the 1,350 steps to Kotor Fortress, this proved to be one of our favorite moments from our Montenegro trip. With each look back, the old town of Kotor and the sparkling blue water shimmered below us. This was also the first place in Kotor where we didn't stumble upon too many people. Okay, it's a long hike, but the 15 euros is worth it for sure. If you go down in the town center, it's definitely clearly been discovered before, but when you go to hike in these areas, there's still like a lot of, I guess, rawness to it. So it just has the, it's potentially going to be really over touristy in the future, but right now is like the good time to go. Yeah, and look at this serpentine. Yeah, I'll turn it around. We put a video up. What are some other random things about Kotor Fortress? The fortress itself is 290 meters at its highest point and has been an important defensive position since Illyrian times. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, you're going to hear Kotor Fortress, San Giovanni Fortress, and St. John's Fortress quite interchangeably. We made it to the top. Uh... And what do you think? Was it worth the 15 euro? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 100 It was, I mean, it's still expensive. Yeah. But 15 uh, euros for your health, and I imagine it's like for a repair and upkeep and stuff like that. So well worth it, come come do it, pay the 15 euro. Yeah. There were no trash, at least. Yeah, no trash. There's obviously way more going on around the bay, but let's head a little bit off the beaten path to the city of Nikšić, which we only ended up in thanks to two failed border crossings. We'll link to that video up above. No. I think we found Montenegro's most secret spot. This, this, this bar overlooking this lake here, but there's no people. In particular, we love the rawness of this city. The entrance to this beautiful fort here is through like a parking lot. Name a fact about this fort that we're in. It was uh, founded by the Roman, of course, as a military based, but also it was then like in the 17th, 18th century, uh, renovated by the Ottomans, and used right? By the Ottomans. But since then, it hasn't been really used. Nowadays, there's a open air theater. The international sign of love. We won't show this, but there's literally human poop everywhere. Like people just treat this place literally like a toilet. Yeah, this makes us realize that sometimes it's good to make people pay for attraction because there is potential, but there are also too many graffitis and poos. There's <laughs> a lot of poops. I'm like in this fortress. So. And condom wrappers. I'm like dodging oh, everything. Nice. So yeah, there's some work to do. Yeah, it's raw. It's very raw, too raw. Fabio, it says free candy, go in. Free candy. Bye. But even though we joke, we look back at this moment fondly. Not a single other person was around us, so we felt like we were the rulers of that decrepit, graffiti, and feces-covered fort. 
It is moments like this that our love for travel comes back again. When we've escaped the predictable places and end up at places where we feel like we may be murdered. This is a viaduct bridge, literally was constructed in 1894, but it is a really cool bridge and it's actually a road, although it's very hard to get here. So it was used actually for, wait, 102 years? Two biggest cities in all of Montenegro, but as you can see, it's fucking tiny. I think two cars won't pass <laughs> no. together. Yeah, especially if it's like two trucks, no way. Jose. What's really awesome about this site is that there's nobody here, um, except for one old man on a bike, actually. So we continued on towards this very curious monastery. You could just make out the top of the church up there. It's uh, called Ostrog, Orthodox Monastery. Mm -hmm. Generally, people make the, I guess, really believers, make the three kilometer journey from the bottom lower monastery all the way up to the top. Barefoot. Of this one, barefoot? Oh, barefoot. Okay, we did not do that. We went to the furthest possible parking spot that was free and hiked up. We just started hiking, so it's not so bad, actually. Fabio has to wear proper clothing. I think you have to know you have to wrap your pants up. Like, it's like you can't show your legs. Yeah, there you go. And we know that people uh, donate something like clothes or soap for the monks. Not just, just clothes or donation. soap. Yeah. What else? What was that? General. There were many blankets. Yeah, everyone seemed to be donating blankets for the monks. It's like, is it really that cold, monks? Like. Do you need that many blankets? I guess uh, in winter. Yeah, it's not like a hundred blankets though. The monastery was built in the 1600s by literally carving out a cliff face. Like most nice things, the upper monastery was rebuilt between 1923 and 1926 because a fire destroyed it. They have vending machines on top of this monastery mountain as well. And whoever is like, Whoever is in charge of these vending machines must be making a lot of money. Jesus. Probably. <laughs> Probably the best part after this steep hike was finding this little restaurant nestled in the mountains. Complete with the best local cheese and a little man who persuaded us to drink rakia even though we were driving. Then we headed to the last place on our list, Olchin. Okay, so we have made it to the village of Olchine. It's gonna be another one of those places that we're going to struggle to pronounce, but yeah, it's cool. It reminds me, like I've been to Albania before and it feels a bit more Albanian than it does like Montenegrin from the places that we've been. Absolutely. I don't, you, yeah, you don't even have anything to compare it to, but you think so as well. Yeah, it also reminds me a lot of uh, Apulia, which is the hill of the Italian boots. And it's just on the other side of the Adriatic sure. Sea. And we're headed to the beach today. And it felt so Albanian because the town is indeed 80% ethnic Albanians. Happy Independence Day of Montenegro. Happy Independence Day, Montenegro. That's how we celebrate. Olchin also has a cute old town, lots of seafood, and a bizarre nightlife scene. I feel like I'm in England right now. <laughs> All right, so that was our list of the most unique places to visit in Montenegro. If you've been, what else would you add? Leave a comment. If you haven't, well, this is your sign to go to Montenegro. Oh, and please like this video and subscribe, please.